Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of vinyl and CD finds of all kinds and this is a series where I have no Beatles that's what it means when you see vinyl finds of all kinds although probably I should call it non Beatles finds because technically all kinds includes the Beatles but I digress all right so I got some stuff here of interest uh, that I've accumulated in the weeks and months past um, so let's go for it and before i start with showing you the actual music i want to show you this this is the kind of thing i know some people can relate to this is a a shopping bag from a store called record world a lot of you will, will be familiar with this uh you know it's funny <laughs> how a little thing like this meant nothing to us back in the day right uh you know in the 70s 80s you know didn't really think about it and uh now it's almost a collectible you save these things and treasure them as museum pieces right yeah this was a, a cool store give the gift of music folks yeah brings back a lot of memories having this so i thought i'd share that with some of you who can relate to those days um also before we get into the actual music i picked this up really cheap uh this is an issue of rolling stone magazine and uh, uh it's for obvious reasons I picked this up. I remember buying this when it was a brand new magazine, uh, the Go-Go's, when they were really popular. Uh, and uh, I picked it up just for a very, very, very low price. And I think it's a nice cover. So I like the Go-Go's, so why not? All right. Before I get to 12-inch records and uh, a couple of CDs... I'm going to just show you this 45 that I got. This is a song from the 1970s by Daniel Boone. It's called Beautiful Sunday. And uh, I must tell you, I really love this song. I like so many of those songs from the Have a Nice Day series uh, of the 70s and on the CDs. I grew up in the 70s, but to me, no better time to be a kid. This is just a poppy, happy song. I defy anybody to play beautiful Sunday and not have a really good feeling. I really feel like it's a great world out there. Um, and, you know, growing up at that time, you know, being six, seven, eight, nine years old, the perfect age for those kind of poppy early 70s songs on the AM radio. So I love that song. All right, now for something different as we start to get into the CDs and getting into the, the vinyl. I want to talk about the rock group Kiss. I picked this CD up. This is the very best of Kiss. All right. And why did I pick this up? Well, there are so many songs that I've enjoyed from Kiss, but I've always had a difficult time finding them on one CD. You know how that is, right? You like certain songs, but different compilations have different songs. Or sometimes you find a compilation that's perfect, except there's something missing. I think there's something missing that I like from this one too yeah a song called heavens on fire heavens on fire by kiss is not on this uh but the reason i picked this one up uh, i, I want to thank doc docus out there doc docus who's got a great channel a lot of fun watching doc um he showed this and recommended this because i was looking for the perfect hit cds as so-called you know best of cd and there were so many kiss compilations that i didn't know which one to get this one seemed to have uh, just about every song I wanted from Kiss in one place, with the exception, as I said, of uh, Heaven's on Fire. And that's a song I like to get. So anyway, very nice. I played this, and I want to talk about Kiss a little bit as I go on. Uh, as I talk about Kiss, I'll show you this album that I picked up. This is, I'm going to take it, first I'll show it in the outer wrap, because it's I could make a whole video on these now. I found new sleeves that I like. They're glossy sleeves. They're not resealable. They just open up. But uh, they really present the albums good. Kiss Dynasty from 1979. I do believe this is an original because on the back, you do not have a barcode. I, I remember I've owned this record before. If you watch old, old videos of mine from 10 years back, you will see that uh, I had this album, but I subsequently got rid of it. Now it's back, and I'm glad it is. Inside is also Kiss Army swag, okay? And it's talking about 
your spinball machine. And I guess that will bring me into talking about Gene Simmons. Let me let me talk about Kiss a little bit. I realize some of you don't like Kiss. Some of you are interested. So here's the deal with Kiss. Uh, when I was uh, just starting out high school, I was the perfect age for Kiss. I mean, I was uh, 13, 14 15 years old when Kiss was really popular. Perfect age to get into Kiss. Um, and at the time, I, I thought they were a joke. Just a complete gimmick, and I, I made fun of them. Like Just like I put a lot of music down today, you know, crappy music today that I think, music I think is crap, excuse me. You know, just the way I put rap down or something, you know. So, um, in, in school, though, everybody was telling me, oh, this is the greatest thing. Kiss. Well, I, I didn't get it then. I kind of get it more now than I do then. There's something of a nostalgia feeling with Kiss for me. Even though I wasn't a, a Kiss fanatic, uh, I was not a member of the Kiss Army when I was growing up. I got into Kiss uh, a little bit because, first of all, they've, they've been around so long and they are kind of iconic. And I really began to like Gene Simmons. I'll be honest with you. Gene Simmons, of course, who is not for everybody. Gene uh, puts a lot of people off. And uh, the thing about Gene for me is I always admired the guy. I've watched a lot of videos of his. I watched his his uh, show, the Family Jewels show that was on when he had that on TV, and I began to think, you know, he exudes confidence. He exudes uh, uh, respect because, yeah, he's into making the money and he's into milking all the dollars. I get that. He's a marketing man, but what I liked about Kiss uh, and Gene Simmons in particular the most is I respect that the man came from nothing when he was a child and came to america he couldn't even speak english he had to learn how to speak english and you know by watching tv shows listening to music and discovering the beatles and all of that and he is a great example of somebody who came from nothing and built himself into being something and i have utter respect for that man because of that and i also like that once he became famous he indulged he had a good time meaning um the ladies you know he was a very big with the ladies let's put it that way he uh was able to you know enjoy the beauty of women but uh by the same token he never got into the drug scene never let the, let the drugs destroy him never partook in all that crap uh that ruined his mind his reasoning and like like it did with other members like you know ace fraley for example okay you know ace is a quite ace fraley is quite a character but however i I still think that, you know, he, he made a lot of trouble, you know, stuff like that. And uh, I, I've watched a lot of documentaries. I know I've turned this into a Kiss video. I'll, I'll, I'll get off it soon, but I, I've always admired Gene Simmons. Um, and uh, it, 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 like I said, his confidence, you know, his self-esteem and the way he made something of himself. And also Paul Stanley. Uh, Paul Stanley, of course, uh, 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 is great. And Gene Simmons and Paul together. I just think you're terrific. Uh, I should mention also that uh, my uh, favorite Kiss song on this one is Strutter. Strutter, from the, the first song from the first album. I love Strutter. And uh, again, I'm still on Kiss. I got to mention, yeah, this album I'm going to talk about. I love the song I Was Made For Loving You. Uh, I think it's a fantastic pop slash disco we song. I think it's fantastic. A hit. I love it. I don't care what anybody says about it. I realize that a lot of KISS fans did not like that song, and they thought it was a sellout. Well, be that as it may, you got to do what you got to do, and I get why KISS made the song and why some of the members reluctantly agreed to do it. Anyway, let's move on from KISS, okay? Um, talk about The Love and Spoonful. I picked this album up, uh, The Best of The Love and Spoonful. John Sebastian wrote some really good stuff. Um, now, when I show you the gatefold, you'll see the members there. And what I particularly like about this is it says on the front that it contains large, full-color individual photos. And uh, I've never seen the photos included, but this one has the photos. So I'm going to show you the photos. There we go. right okay so that's very nice to have that good music now here's something very interesting this is so interesting to me that i'm going to have to maybe devote a separate separate video to this i'll tell you what it is wanda jackson okay wanda jackson 
Even though she looks like this on the cover, she's actually 83 years old. And uh, a brand new CD called Encore. And now, of course, why would I suddenly buy a CD by Wanda Jackson, who I only briefly heard of? I know she had connections with Elvis in the 50s and so forth. Uh, and, uh, well, there's the reason. Let's, let's show you. If you read that, it says it's uh, produced by and featuring Joan Jett. And, of course, I'm a Joan Jett fanatic. And also L. King. Can you believe this? My two favorite ladies right now, Joan Jett and L. King, who I, through complete coincidence, both of them happen to be on this disc. What are the chances of that happening? And they sing along. Uh, now, I'm not going to go crazy giving a review of this because I, I want to talk about this, this in more detail. Now, I'm either going to make, I haven't decided whether I'm going to make a separate Wanda Jackson video yet or whether I'm going to uh, include this in my series, First Time Spins, where I hear a record of CD uh, and I talk about what I think of it on first listens. So I'm going to go into this in more detail at a later date, but I, I got it solely because of uh, Joan Jett and the participation of El King together, and they're on a song here called Two Shots. So if you want to hear a sample with El King and Joan Jett singing back up to Wanda Jackson, look on YouTube for a song called Two Shots and see what you think of it. And now, because I was so into it, this gives you an idea that I like what I heard. I like what I heard to the point where I thought, let me go a little deeper into Wanda Jackson. I picked this up, Nobody's Darling, Wanda Jackson album. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm actually going to start delving, I think, a little more into Wanda Jackson, depending where I could find her albums. All right. Now, here's a gift that I received. This is a gift uh, that I received from my friend Robert S. out there who watches my channel. Uh, this is an album, Barnaby By Touch. And um, he wanted me to hear this. So far, I've heard of half of it. And there was some interesting stuff on here. I'm not, I, I'm not going to lie. I haven't gotten to the whole thing. I think what I'm going to do is save this for my next uh, first time spins that I'm going to do. And I keep promising I'm going to get back to that. We'll see if I keep true to that promise. Here's a sealed copy of a Connie Francis album, Live at the Sahara in Las Vegas. I mean, this is just, I have this open to play. Uh, I have, I, you know, this is a common album. You can find it at thrift stores. I have a a good copy to play but this is so cool to collect i have i like having it in the shrink sealed so i got uh, a couple of albums left uh, yesterday we lost charlie watts of the rolling stones he died at the age of 80 i made a video talking about it a little bit and here's a, a record that i got a talk album from 1965 uh it's here love of the stones it's a uh, a u.s tour with an interviewer named Ed Rudy, you can see him on the side there. Ed Rudy uh, made albums like this, where I guess you, you'd say he made the albums. He, he was talking about uh, Beatles. Everybody knows Ed Rudy and the Beatles. Same kind of album. There's a couple of Beatles-related albums by Ed Rudy. And uh, there we go. The Charlie over there. The late Charlie Watts. There he is. Rest in peace. And uh, so it's, it's basically a talk album with him following them on tour. Did the same with the Beatles. And he did the same here for the Dave Clark Five. Here's a version. Ed Rudy with uh, the Dave Clark Five. And uh, this is signed by uh, Ed Rudy. And it says, it looks like it says Fab. It's Fab wishes to Marie Ferrara. So Marie Ferrara, I got your album. If you want it back, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's mine now. And, uh, yeah, so he talks to the DC-5 here. And uh, pretty interesting. You know, so now I have the Stones, the Beatles, and the Dave Clark 5 with Ed Rudy, the interview man. And that's it. Thank you all for watching. Take care. Have a great day. And uh, we'll do it again soon.